One of my personal favorite types of books to read are vampire themed books. So in today's video, I want to talk about the 10 vampire themed books that I've already read this year and whether I recommend them to you or not. So hello, my fellow fantasy book lovers. My name is Kathy. I'm a god girl from Belgium and I love reading fantasy books. One of my previous videos that made this channel take off was my vampire romance books from non-spicy to very spicy. And if I were to make that video again today, I would have at least 10 books to add to that list. So in no particular order at all, well, yes, there is an order. It's the order in which I've read them. I want to go over these books. So I will let you know if it is spicy or not, and also my general thoughts on each book. So before this video gets too long, let's get started. The first book I read this year that was vampire themed was Serpent and the Wings of Night. This book is a mix between vampire society and a Hunger Games type contest and the winner of that contest gets rewarded by one of the goddesses that vampires admire. There are different types of vampires, there is like a hierarchy. The main character that we follow is called Oraya. She is a human girl and she is raised as the daughter of the current vampire king. Now she has been taken from when um, that king actually conquered a part of the village where she used to live and she was the only one left alive and she was kind of like fighting back. So they call her My Little Viper, I think is what they actually call her, hence Serpent and the Wings of Night. And in this contest, Oraya actually meets another character who's called Rain, who has wings, hence the Wings of Night, part of the title, and they kind of get involved. I feel like the main focus of this story was on the trials and how Oraya was raised and how she sees the world and how the world building is for her and not particularly from the standpoint of the other characters. And in this book you have the main plotline which is like the Hunger Games types trials and then there is a secondary romance plotline between Oraya and Rain. This is very obvious from the start so it's not like really a spoiler in my opinion. Now I did enjoy this book but it wasn't one of the best books that I've read. I give this book a 4 out of 5 stars. Now with this series there is a smaller in-between book or a book that could be read separately and it is called Six Scorched Roses. In Six Scorched Roses we follow Lilith who is the main character and the lands that she lives in are cursed by a god and she's trying to find a cure for the illness that, that gave her village. To cure that illness she thinks she needs the blood of a vampire and there happens to be one vampire living quite locally and she goes to him and she offers him six roses in exchange for six vials of his blood. A romance starts building between the two and this was a very short book. I think I read this in one evening. It was so fast read for me and it was very like I love this story. So this one got a five stars from me and it also has some spicy romance. Serpent and the Wings of Night and Six Scorched Roses both by Carissa Broadbent I really enjoyed and I would highly recommend them to you. I'm currently still waiting on getting my hands on a physical copy of the second book in the series, like the actual second book. And once I've read that, I will let you know what I think about that as well. After that, we have A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. This book is written by one of the brides of Dracula. And this is actually written in letters to herself, kind of, to explain what is going on. Now, the name Dracula is not mentioned everywhere. And this really shows the toxicity of the romance and of what is actually going on in the life that she led. So we start from the point that she gets turned into a vampire and joins Dracula and then it goes on with multiple partners and in the end how it ends for Dracula. I love this book. Now I've had a very traumatic past relationship and this book reminded me a lot of certain parts of that relationship so it is a little bit heavier to read and for me it really helped me kind of give certain things a place like she does in this book. So I loved A Diary of Blood. The only reason that I give it four stars and not five is because I kind of felt it missed something for me. I can't quite pinpoint what it was but for me it felt it lacked a little bit. I read this really fast, I really enjoyed it, but it felt incomplete somehow. 
Now this book has a tiny bit of spice, but it's not super prominent. One of the newer vampire books of this year was Bright by Ailey Hazelwood. Now there was a lot of hype around this book because Ailey Hazelwood is a very well-known romance author and I was intrigued. I just wanted to read it. In this book we follow a girl who is a vampire who has been used previously as collateral kind of for a human and vampire-like understanding between their worlds. So in the world building you have um, humans, you have vampires and you have werewolves and those three need to like be on a certain degree of like not fighting with each other. So in order to keep humans from fighting with vampires and vice versa there is collateral. And the main character from this book Misery, the female main character, is actually that collateral for the humans and the vampires. So as a vampire she was raised kind of with humans and she had to live there for X years. Now at the start of the book she is still living with humans because her contract was over and she could decide for her own where she wanted to stay and she didn't really have any connection to the vampire community at that point so she just stayed with the humans and mainly the girl that was like with her while she was raised there. She's sort of her best friend. Now very early on in the book she is called back to her family and something important happens and she is about to be the wife to a werewolf to make an alliance between vampires and werewolves. And that is the basic premises of this book. Um, the girl needs to go with the werewolves, live where they live and then like a few things happen. So it is more than just a romance because there is a lot more going on but the main focus of this book is the romance between the vampire bride and the werewolf group basically. I quite enjoyed this book. I think I give it a five stars because for me at the time of reading it it really fulfilled that easy read feel because this is written beautifully and very fast paced and it just reads easily. It has the elements that I personally like in a vampire book. It has some of the investigation elements that I also liked. So for me this was one of my favorite reads this year. After that, of course, there is Empire of the Damned. You can see over here I have a few of my J. Christoph Empire of the Vampire and Empire of the Damned books. Empire of the Vampire, Empire of the Damned is hands down my favorite series so far. Empire of the Damned is the second book in the Empire of the Vampire, what's going to be a trilogy. And in this book we follow Gabriel de Leon again. Um, he's a silver saint, the last silver saint, and this book is written again in interview style. Now in this book we actually continue continue on on the first book where we kind of left off so I'm not going to talk too much in detail about the contents of the book but if you're into epic fantasy, brutal fantasy with a lot of battles, a lot of gore going on with vampires and I think you should really read these books. There is also a little bit of romance line, a little bit of spice in these books but it's not very prominent. Um, in the first book it was a lot more than in the second one and the second one ends on a cliffhanger once again. And I'm really really looking forward to book three. I hope it releases somewhere this year or next year. I really hope um, yeah, to get my hands on that soon because I want to know what happens. It's just whew, I love it so much. So this was another five star read for me. This is more like an epic fantasy, dark fantasy book. After that I dipped my toes yet again in vampire romantasy books and I read Filthy Rich Vampire by Geneva Lee. In this book we have a vampire that is awakened because he's been asleep for X years and he needs to reintroduce himself into society and he needs to find a bride. From the other side we have a human girl who's actually performing at this evening. She is not very rich, she really doesn't have any ties unless like like you count her roommates, her mom has cancer, she has a lot of bills to pay, she's quite poor and then he is like insanely rich. The two get involved because the vampire doesn't really want to marry a witch as he should actually be doing due to the rules of his coven etc. And this ends up being a for me very frustrating book. Don't get me wrong, I really like the idea of just a human girl and a vampire interacting. I've read a bunch of books with those interactions but it ends on a really bad note, it ends on a downer and for me that killed the mood of the entire book. It's like ups and downs and ups and downs and ups and downs and it ends on a very low low. Now I know there's four more books or three more books in this series. I do have the second one ready to read someday when I'm feeling like it but for now I'm not going to. And I gave Filthy Rich Vampire a three stars. There is some spice happening in this book, there's actually quite a lot of spice happening but it's not as explicit as some 
other books. So not a high hitter, not a low hitter. It's good if you're into romantasy and you want one that is with vampires. Up next is Masters of Death. Now, this book was sold to me as being this vampire real estate agent needing to sell a haunted house and get rid of the ghost that's haunting it. But the story ends up in fact being only a tiny part about that vampire and the ghost and mostly about that godson who needs to do these games to regain whatever. It doesn't really matter too much. I felt this was a book that had a lot of twists and turns that I did or did not see coming but that I really didn't care about. It was mainly about the gods and about the games that those gods played and not about the vampires. And if you have a book that is gorgeous black and red with spray painted bats on the sides, I expect more from you. So for me to give this book a three stars was actually being generous. I should have given it a two stars as I just felt let down by it. So if you like a paranormal type of book that has a lot of investigation going on and if you like gods like Greek gods and other gods in general then you might like this but for it being sold as a vampire themed book I was very very disappointed. Up next we have the spiciest book on this list and it's Court of the Vampire Queen by Katie Roberts. Now, some people already know Kitty Robert because she writes a lot of smuts and I was not aware of that until I picked up this book and I started reading and it felt more like fan fiction that you would read online. So for me, this book was a very low score simply because of the way that it was written. Now, if you like smut and if you like a lot of smut in your books, you will really love this because we start every single chapter at the beginning of the book with some smutty interaction and it drives me insane. I needed a little bit more world building from this book. I needed a little bit more depth from this book and I give this book a generous two stars because I felt it lacked so much on the story level. Like I get it, you want smutty interactions, you want to read it for the smut, that's what this book is about basically, but I missed a little bit more storyline to it. Um, I just couldn't get into the smut because to get into smut I need to know who the characters are and not just have like a two-line description of them. Like that's not enough. Sorry, not sorry. So if you're into very smutty books, this one will be for you. Up next is A Tempest of Tea. Again, a totally different type of vampire book than all of the previous ones. In this book, we follow a group of misfits, basically, and they have this tea house. And by day, it is actually a tea house, and by night, it turns into this like vampire sanctuary thing where they can drink blood, etc. So it's like commercial in two different levels, like tea on one side and blood and people on the other side. Now, in this book, they actually want to do a heist to get into the vampire coven to retrieve a very important document to save their tea house. The book is written from multiple POVs, which also makes that I've kind of forgotten all of the names of the people in this book because you don't follow them constantly. The main character of this book is called Arti. She's a girl who looks kind of like a boy and dresses like that on purpose not to get harassed. Um, she is actually leading this group and also like telling the main storyline. You will discover more things about Artie at the end of the book and I feel the ending was so fast and I was like, hold on, like give us a little bit more time to process all of this information and then the book ended. Now I know that there is going to be a book too and I'm very happy about it because I wanted more from this world and I wanted to know where it was going after this heist happened and after everything that happens happens. So I'm very happy that there will be a book too. And I gave this story a three hour out of five stars on one side because it didn't really grab me at first like what was going on it took a little bit of time to like settle I love the heist part of the book but I didn't like the ending of the book so for that reason I'm giving it a three stars know that this is a YA book and not a adult fantasy book um, it doesn't have a lot of explicit gory content or sexual content and I enjoyed that for once after reading the extremely smutty Kate Robert book. So if you're looking into a heist type situation with vampires involved, then I think this is the book for you. And then the most recent vampire book I've read is actually The Scarlet Veil. Now this book was on my TBR list for a little while and I really wanted to get into it, but somehow I kept pushing it aside for other books. 
I really enjoyed this book. It wasn't a five star read, but it was a four star read for me because I really did enjoy the building of the character. Now we follow Celie in this book. Celie is a girl out of an aristocrat family whose sister was killed by a witch and Celie actually assisted in killing the witch that killed her sister. Now she wants to become part of Les Chasseurs or in English the Hunters basically. And the Hunters or Les Chasseurs is actually a group of people who hunt down creatures who are not where they're supposed to be or are attacking people or other races of creatures and just need to like be uh, pulled into court or sanctioned or whatever. Now Celie is trying her best to really be good at this. She's also engaged to Jean-Luc who is actually the head of this chasseur department um, and due to that engagement he's kind of like keeping her small I feel. And you notice this at the beginning of the book like she is not being involved in a lot of things. She's not being trained the way the other people are. She's really kind of been pushed to the side by a lot of people in the early stages of this book. Now at some point something happens and she goes to a graveyard to put flowers on graves and she discovers a body. She reports this but she also starts investigating this. And after that she discovers that a lot of information has been withheld from her and she discovers everything that is going on kind of behind her back. At that point she runs away and she gets kidnapped by vampires! Yay! Um, not really, but still. It is the best twist for me that this book could have possibly gotten because she was so stuck in our world before and now she's taken to these vampires where she's kind of been held captive. She at the beginning is also taken instead of someone else who they actually wanted to kidnap but you will discover more about that later in the story. I really love this book. I really wanted to give this five stars but I felt near the ending of the book everything was so rushed and I felt like some of the things weren't explained very well or weren't like deep up enough. Um, so I felt a little bit lacking near the end. But that's the only complaints I have about this book. I love the building of the character of Sally. I really loved how throughout the book we get to know her better and better and get her like she's not stuck in this victim role and that's what I really enjoyed about this book. For this book this is again a YA fantasy book. It is a chunk of a book. I spent I think almost two weeks reading it. I did really enjoy it and it was worth my time. Spice wise it doesn't really have any like there are a little bit of interactions but not explicit sexual content maybe in book two who knows and I think this will be the start of a series of books or at least I hope so that there will be more because I do want more from Celie and from this world that I started to really enjoy. These were the 10 vampire themed books that I've already read in 2024. At the moment of recording this video I'm currently in my dragon reading era so I'm reading dragon themed books for an entire month of May. Um, it's really fun and after this I can finally make an updated video about dragon books. Um, I'm really looking forward to that because whenever I make these types of videos I get such good recommendations from you and that really brings me more books to read and better books to read and it just brings me a lot of joy. So feel free to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. If there's any other vampire themed books that you feel I need to check out feel free to let me know in the comments down below and I'll also be linking to my vampire themed book video down below as well as somewhere here on screen. And of course if you haven't already and you'd like to be feel free to subscribe to my channel. I make new videos every week and I would love to have you for every single one of them. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon with a new video. Bye!